Hello and welcome to Jason's Bedtime Storytime. My name is Jason Newland and please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. This is number 28. And I haven't done one of these. The last time I did one of these was, oh, was it February 7th, 2022? And it's now the 3rd of August, 2023. That's over three months ago. So I thought I'd do another one. Because I know at least one person enjoyed the last one I did. So that's, that's nice. So let's have a look. So I thought I'd do today is the idea behind these Jason bedtime story times is it's an opportunity for you to maybe lay back and relax and let your mind wander as you listen to my voice just telling you this story. That's really, I guess I didn't really need to explain to you what a story was, did I? Um, I think the title quite explains what it is really, isn't it? I guess. Anyway, so the last recording I did actually on the podcast, I said a had over a thousand listens, but I think that's the same person. So, this is going to be, <laughs> they've listened three times a day for the last year. So, this is called The Adventures of Little Tim and the Magic Forest. Or Magic Forest, depending on how you pronounce it. So, once upon a time, in a small village, nestled between the mountains and the sea, lived a curious and adventurous little boy named Tim. Now, despite being born blind, Tim's spirit was undeterred. I may not see the world, but I can feel it, hear it, and imagine it, he would often say to his friends, which got a little bit boring, you know, after a few years. But they put up with it. They used to, well, I used to trip him up and things just to make, you know, tie his shoelaces together and things like that. Just to get him back for constantly saying what he just said. So, which is a little bit cruel, really. Anyway, one day, little Tim heard a tale about a magical forest that lay just beyond the mountains. This forest is home to fantastic creatures and holds countless mysteries. And I may not see the world, but I can feel it, hear it and imagine it. Um, The elder villager said to him, why do you keep saying that? I, I just have to say it. It's something that I say. I'm known for it. You don't have to keep saying it, though, do you? But Tim decided, regardless of what the villagers said, he would venture into the forest to see if the tales were true. So with a backpack filled with sandwiches, a bottle of water, and his favourite book in Braille, Tim set off on his journey. As he crossed the mountains... 
He felt the cool breeze and heard the rustling leaves of the forest in the distance. And as Tim ventured deeper into the forest, he kept bumping into trees and rocks. Each time he would say, Oh, excuse me, I didn't see you there. And um, then he'd say, I may not see the world, but I can feel it, hear it and imagine it. So he, th he thought he was bumping into a person, apparently. I mean, I'm guessing, I can't read his mind. Uh, I can't really say what he's thinking, but I can tell the story from a third person perspective, really. And the forest echoed. It echoed with his polite apologies and his own chuckles as he realised his mistakes. But suddenly, Tim stumbled upon a small frog. Startled, he accidentally inhaled the frog, which immediately hopped back out. And he said, why don't frogs park illegally? That's what Tim asked the frog. The frog said, burp, burp, because frogs can't talk, can they? And uh, Tim said, it's because they, they don't want to get towed. <laughs> so he laughed at his own joke. And then, miraculously, Tim could see. This is quite fast moving, isn't it? The world around him was more magnificent than he had ever imagined. The trees around him took shapes of the different zoo animals. A tall giraffe, a mighty elephant, and even a playful monkey. Why... Why don't some animals play cards? Tim asked, looking at the animal-shaped trees. Because they're afraid of cheetahs. <laughs> he laughed to himself. No one else around, really, um, to acknowledge his joke. And suddenly, out of the blue... He tripped over and, and he realised his shoelaces were tied together and he thought, who did that? And he looked around and he saw a squirrel. And the squirrel said, hello, young traveller, I'm Squeaky. And Tim laughed and Squeaky said, why are you laughing? He said, because your name's, well, well you're called Squeaky. I'm sorry, because you're called Squeaky and you're... Um, your voice is quite deep. Oh, <laughs> yes. Well, I was called Squeaky before I was actually, yeah, I was a little baby at the time, so no one knew what my voice was going to be like. Well, how come you can talk, but frogs can't? It's all part of fairy tales and, you know, stories, really. It's up to the narrator. Oh, I see. Okay. And he said, look, there's a tree there, it looks like a monkey. Squeaky told Tim about the forest's magic, trying to move him away from focusing on animal-looking trees. Because he looked at the trees and he lived in the forest and Squeaky couldn't really see the resemblance. But um, he didn't realise that Tim had been blind his whole life and had no idea what a, what a giraffe looked like or an elephant or even a playful monkey. So it was kind of making out, really. If anything, the uh, giraffe tree looked more like a sleeping leopard. And the, squee the monkey tree looked, um, it looked a bit like a daffodil, really. Oh, actually, it was a daffodil. It wasn't a tree. Okay. Anyway, Squeaky told him about the forest's magic which was 
guarded by a wise owl named Oliver. Why don't squirrels have any money? Tim asked Squeaky. Because they work for peanuts. <laughs> oh, that's, that's uh, so droll. I think that's very great, great, says Squeaky. Um, should we just move on? What do you mean? Well, it's really hard what to do after that joke. It's really, can we just move on and get on the story? What story? The, the story that's being told that involves you and me walking through a, a forest, a magical forest. Oh, okay then. I don't mind. Cool. So as they journeyed further, they met suddenly a little girl who was half made of gingerbread and half made of wool. Her name was Ginny. Hello, Tim. I'm Ginny, the gingerbread wool girl. She said with a wee sweet smile. How do you know my name? How do you know my name's Tim? I've never seen you before. Well, I, 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 I'm not sure, really. But another thing, what's that? We both kind of sound, sound, sound quite similar, don't we? Yes, I know. I think the narrator didn't really work out the voices before he started talking, really. Oh, no, I can't even tell who's speaking and I'm the one speaking. I don't know if I'm Tim or if I'm Ginny. I don't, I don't know either. Shall we change our voices to make it a bit more easier? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I'd like to keep my voice because I'm Tim and I've been, I'm pretty much the star of the show. You're just an extra, really. I'm the star. Um, and maybe you could do a different voice. How about this? Is this a bit better? Yeah, that's much more feminine. Okay, right. Uh, so, hello, Tim. I'm Ginny, the gingerbread wool girl. She said with a sweet smile and a gentle voice. Ginny, Ginny was a kind, very kind and gentle girl who loved to knit and bake. Why don't we ever tell secrets on a farm? Tim asks Ginny. Be, 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 because the potatoes have eyes, the corn, the corn has ears, and the beans talk. <laughs> uh, I don't really know what that was about, said Ginny. Um, no, never mind, should we just carry on? Okay then. So they continued to walk, sometimes they skipped. You know, just chatted about the good old days. I mean, unfortunately, they just met, so the good old days sort of involved about five minutes before. So I remember when we met. Yeah, yeah, I remember when we met. Yeah, yeah. Remember when we both had the same same voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was that kind of stuff. So they're walking along. And they also suddenly met a peculiar character. Like, Ginny's not peculiar enough. A peculiar character. And he's, he was a vampire named Vlad. What an original name. Who was so scared of the sight of blood. He was really just couldn't stand the sight of blood. He was absolutely petrified. Oh, hello there. I'm Vlad. Uh, just a heads up. I'm, I'm a bit squeamish, so no talk of blood, please. <laughs> Vlad said, revealing his skinny but harmless fangs. Uh, okay, here's one. Why, why don't vampires have more friends? Tim asked Vlad. 
because they're a pain in the neck. <laughs> oh my goodness, um, I've forgotten my voice, said Vlad. It's too many different voices. Uh, 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 that's just that's all. That's very funny. <laughs> oh, so uh, he said. Uh, Vlad said, "What is it? Could you guide me, Oliver, Squeaky, Ginny, and Vlad? I want to learn about the magic." Tim asked. They agreed, and they all set off together along the way. And they just carried on walking. Vlad flew a little bit, but he didn't fly too high because he was also scared of heights. Ginny, they'd stop every now and then and have a little snack, eat a little bit of her. Uh, Squeaky, he was constantly like nibbling on his nuts. And Oliver, I can't remember who Oliver is. And Tim, of course, is walking. So they just walking along and they met or they encountered various magical creatures and they met a a giggling brook that sang songs. Welcome to our magical forest, Tim. The brook sang in a amazingly melodious almost classically trained voice and Tim said how, how, do you, how, how do you know my name and how can you talk your water how can water talk and the the, the brook said I think brook's water isn't it anyway I'm, let's pretend brook is a water and the brook said uh, because it's a magic forest Okay, I got I got one for you. Why don't rivers ever get lost? Tim asked the brook. Because they always follow the current. <laughs> and there was no response. There was no sound from anyone. They just looked up in the air, uh, and then um, suddenly, out of the blue, out of the sky, in fact, dropped. A grumpy old tortoise. Who told riddles? What gets wetter the moid dries? The tortoise asked. Which Tim quickly replied, A towel! (laughs) And then Tim said, Why why don't tortoises like to talk to strangers at parties? (laughs) It's because they're a little shellfish. The tortoise, like, just, he looked at the other people in the, in the groups. I don't know. How, how, why? How, why? I, I haven't even got a sentence. I just, I can't, what? And they all like said, yeah, we know, we know. It's, but he was, he was blind for all this time and suddenly he can see and we're putting that down. We're putting it down to that. I mean, maybe he's always like this, but. You know, he's he's excited and he's happy and we don't want to take away that from him and um you know, he seems he seems like a good kid but annoying, really annoying. But, you know, what can you do? What, what can you do? So oh, okay, fair enough. So, um they carried on, just carried on, and finally they met a family of rabbits who baked the most delicious carrot pies. Troy O'Pari, Tim, is the best in the forest, the mother rabbit said, offering him a warm slice. How do you know my name? Everyone knows my name. Does that mean you don't want any pie? Of course I want some bloody pie. I just want to know why everyone gets... I'm, I'm not paranoid. I just want to know what... Well, how do you know my name? Just just have some pie. Oh, okay. Oh, here's one. Why don't rabbits ever get caught? Tim asked the rabbit family. 
it's because it's because they always have a hair start. <laughs> and relax. So they were very tired at this point. Everyone was very, very tired. And they only walked for about ten minutes, but it was re it seemed like days. And, uh, you know, after a long journey, they finally reached Oliver's tree. Oh, Oliver's the, the owl, isn't he? I forgot about Oliver. Okay, Oliver is the, the owl. And the tree looked like a wise old owl. Okay. And uh, he says, Oliver said, Hello, Tim. You've come to learn about the magic of our forest, is that correct? And he explained to Tim the magic of the forest and it was all about its harmony. He said, uh, Every creature, big or small, plays a part in maintaining this harmony, Oliver told him. And Oliver said, How do you know my name? How do you know my name? How? I don't get it. I mean, this is ridiculous. It's just, it's, I, don't, I, don't, I don't understand. It's okay, this is a magic forest. It's magic. Everything is magic. I'm an I know everything said Oliver the uh, owl, that's it, that's an owl. But Tim, unable to resist, asked Oliver Why don't owls go on dates when it's raining? It's, it's because it's because because it's too wet to woo. <laughs> Oliver, however, was not amused. Tim, he said sternly, your jokes are quite uh, mm, unique. But uh, remember. Not every moment needs a punchline. Sometimes it's okay to just enjoy the magic around us. Don't need to tell jokes all the time. If you are going to tell a joke, maybe... <laughs> make it funny, perhaps? Tim wasn't so happy with that. It, it didn't really land so well with him. And he, you know, feeling a bit bold, Tim challenged Oliver to a friendly wrestling match in their underwear. Now, Oliver, surprised but amused, agreed. So they wrestled in the mud and even though Oliver was much bigger and stronger, Tim held his own. He did, he held his own. And the forest echoed with their laughter and grunts and cheers of their friends. Now, after that, and after they all cleaned themselves up, had a little sleep, Tim spent the rest of the day with Oliver inside the tree, chatting. At least that's what they told everyone else they were doing. Learning about the forest and its, its inhabitants. And as the sun began to set, Tim realised that he had spent the entire day in the magical forest. Thank you, Oliver, Squeaky, Ginny and Vlad. And everyone I else, everyone I met today, I will never forget this adventure. 
Tim said, his heart full of gratitude. What about me? said the frog. But unfortunately everyone had walked off so no one could hear him. And when Tim returned to his village, he was a changed boy. I mean, he had different clothes on, but he was changed internally. Okay, that doesn't sound good. He, he felt different emotionally. He felt more uplifted, more open. Again, that sounds wrong. But, you know, he felt more in touch with nature and spirituality maybe saw that the world was a much bigger place than he than his little village that he lived and he shared his experiences and the wisdom he gained with his friends and family the magic of the forest is in its harmony he would say and we can create the same magic in our village. We can in our village. Not anyone else's village, our village. We don't care about other villages, just this one. Besides, there might not be any other villages. I don't feel there's any other villages anywhere. I mean, they would be aliens, wouldn't they? This is the world. This village is the entire planet. I mean, we've already gone out of space into the forest. So, yeah, there can't be anything else around here. And so the tale of the magic forest lived on. It was passed down from generation to generation, reminding everyone about the magic that, in, that exists in harmony and unity. So, one of the things that actually happened when Tim returned to the village is he did feel uplifted and for the first time people actually gathered around him listening to what he was saying, uh, actually taking notice of the, the words that he was expressing. And he told everyone the story and the tales of his journey. And as Tim finished telling his tale, he gave a big, hearty laugh. And suddenly, to the shock of everyone present, his head fell off. Ooh, there was a moment of stunned silence. And then then Tim's head, lying on the ground, started to laugh. Gotcha, he said, as his body picked up his head and placed it back on his shoulders. It turned out that Tim had learned a trick from Vlad, the squeamish vampire, who had taught him how to detach and reattach his head. It was a harmless trick, but it certainly gave everyone a good scare. And so the tale of the magical forest lived on, passed down from generation to generation, reminding everyone about the magic that exists in harmony and unity. And the boy who could take his head off.